Okay, let's start. I'm Harish. I lead platforms and community at AngelAg. And today we have Avinash, who is not only uh, AngelAg ambassador, but also works with uh, Deloitte as their DevOps engineer and also contributes to CNCF projects in his free time. He has been kind to come back again and talk about uh, in detail uh, on how you can build command line interface tools using Go language. If you missed the first uh, edition of this series, go watch it on our YouTube channel where we talked about very basic introduction about Go programming language and how you can get started with it. And with that, I will quickly hand this over to Avinash. Over to you. Take it away. Take as much time as you want. And thank you once again for agreeing to do this. Thanks. Thanks for the introduction. And uh, thank you for having me. All right. Uh, so hi, everyone. I think uh, Harish has already given an introduction about me. So uh, I'm Avinash. I work as a of Ops Engineer at Alert. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Let's uh, get started. Uh, any further ado. Start sharing my screen. All right. Uh, so the agenda for today is uh, pretty simple. Uh, we're going to go over uh, building CLI tools with Golang and the particular library that we'll be using today is uh, SPF 13 Cobra. This is uh, used in a lot of cloud native projects. And we can also look at that uh, over here. I believe there's a list. Yes. Uh, so the agenda is to uh, build command line tools uh, using this uh, SPF 13 Co Cobra and also uh, look at releasing this uh, using GitHub Actions and also package this for uh, multiple environments, say for Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. Uh, that is the uh, agenda in a, uh, in a brief. So if you look at the list uh, of all the projects that are built with uh, uh, Cobra, there is quite a few. And obviously, not everything is covered in this, but there are quite a few uh, popular CNCF projects that are built with uh, uh, Cobra. So that is uh, one interesting thing about this project. So that's why we'll be using this to uh, learn building CLI tools. And let's get started. So there is this GitHub repository. So this is where uh, all the source code for the uh, CLI for the tool or the library is present. But we are interested in the docs that is in cobra.dev. And there's also a CLI tool to uh, um, maybe bootstrap this uh, CLI uh, tool. So there is Cobra CLI. We'll use this tool to bootstrap our uh, CLI tool. And to begin with, uh, I'll open my terminal. Just give it a second. So this is the Cobra generator, uh, the Cobra CLI. And uh, we can install this with, uh, if you have Go installed, you can use uh, install it using Go install and then uh, the path to the CLI, uh, the GitHub repository and then the Cobra CLI. We'll be using this to generate our uh, base template. And also, uh, I apologize if my mechanical keyboard is too loud. I do not have another keyboard right now, but we'll have to adjust with this. All right, uh, so we'll uh, go to the path where we want to uh, build our application. So the general path or the general, uh, you know, path that is usually followed is uh, Go uh, or wherever you would have the uh, Go code and then SRC, github.com and then your uh, username. Here I believe already have a to do or a hello CLI. So I'm going to create a directory called hello. So this is uh, the command line that we'll be building first. And then uh, we'll look at building a to do CLI as well. All right. So let me get into the hello directory. And now uh, I already have the uh, generator installed. So uh, if you do not have it and you're following along, install it using go install github.com slash SPF 13 slash Cobra CLI. And it should install it in your GoPath uh, slash bin. So if you don't have this uh, path in your uh, actual path of your system, uh, you can check that using Echo if you're on Linux and make sure that uh, you know that is present somewhere over here, this uh, GoPath slash bin. If not, add it. Uh, in my case, it wasn't. So just a heads up uh, if you're uh, doing it. So add that and then we'll have access to Cobra CLI. Now, the first thing that we, if you go through this, the first thing that we'll need to do is first init uh, uh, or initialize our Go module. So we'll do Go mod init. And we'll not actually need to provide the entire path github.com slash because we are in that uh, directory. So that's the uh, special significance of having this particular directory structure. So if you have it under go src github.com, your username and then your project name, uh, it'll automatically uh, Go will automatically pick it up and then uh, initialize the model na module name accordingly. 
So that's one of the magic uh, magical things about it. So I'll clear my screen now. And the next thing that we'll need to do is uh, initialize using Cobra CLI. So I'm not sure if the screen is visible as well. So I'll it. Okay, so you will use Cobra CLI in it to initialize or bootstrap our uh, template code. So now this will uh, create some template code for us and then we'll look at that template code and then I'll explain now uh, what exactly is happening and what changes we can do on top of this. I'll uh, all I did is open it, open it up in Visual Studio Code. Let's just wait for it to initialize. Okay. All right. Uh, so this is the directory that uh, this is the directory structure or the file structure that is created by that uh, generator. We can obviously create the files individually and then uh, go about it. But this is the best way to get started, in my opinion. And with that Cobra CLI uh, generator as well, there are a few flags that you can do that you can use. That is, if you scroll down, I think it is somewhere over here. That is. Yeah, you can specify the license as well, or what license you want the project to have, uh, and also specify the author. So I'll just leave that to default. Uh, I believe uh, it should be an empty license and then an empty author. So uh, not really uh, our focus here. So if uh, and any go pro any go project starts with the main .go file, or uh, it can be named anything, but it has to have the uh, main function in it. So uh, the main .go file has the main function over here and it ha it calls cmd.execute so this cmd is being imported uh, from our uh, cmd directory over here so if you notice it's github.com slash my username slash hello slash cmd so that is where it is being imported so it is just calling the execute uh, function from there so this file is not really doing anything we'll have to look at uh, look at root.go under cmd so this is where the package cmd is defined and here is where we have uh, the execute function. Sorry, ah, it's right over here. I'll just zoom in uh, in case it's not visible. Okay, so this is where we have the execute function. So that's how uh, the uh, hierarchy goes. We from the main door go, we call this execute function. So here, uh, once again, we're calling another execute function root cmd dot execute. So root cmd. This is the uh, important part. This, so this is where we uh, define our uh, command line. So uh, before we go into this, let's, uh, let's just familiarize with some of the command line concepts. So this repository actually has some of it, I believe somewhere over here. Yep. So there are two uh, concepts or two um, points that we will need to note over here. That is one. The first thing is commands and the next thing is flags. So when we have a command line tool, it can have multiple commands and sub commands uh, under it. So for example, if you say uh, the tool, the command that we're building right now is hello, right? So hello, and then say we can have say, and then that's now right now here, say is the command. Hello is the actual tool, say is the command, and it can have multiple, uh, it can either take in an input or have uh, multiple sub commands. So say, uh, Maybe, I don't know, some gibberish. So this next part is the sub command for say. So this is how uh, the commands are. And we can also have flags for this. So flags are, are defined using dash dash and then the flag name, say verbose. So verbose is something that you'll find in a lot of CLI. So I'm using that as an example. So this is a flag. Verbose is a flag over here. And each flag can also have a value associated with it. It can be a string value, integer, or a Boolean. We'll look into how to define that as well when we are defining our own flags, but this is the concept of flags and the flags can also have a shorthand form. So instead of completely typing uh, verbose, we can just have hyphen V. So this is commands and flags. So we'll just need to get that uh, context in so that uh, when I'm uh, referring to commands and flags while going uh, over uh, the tool. Uh, so that is what I mean. Okay. So now the root command. So this is uh, the root command. So a root command in the sense we are building a hello CLR, right? So here, hello is the root command. So whatever uh, we are defining here is for the functionality when we just use hello without any sub commands or without any flags. So that is what I uh, mean by the root command over here. And uh, we're just importing uh, Cobra. Uh, this is all automatically done using that generator, but uh, we're importing that co Cobra command and then initializing the R root command. So here uh, we can define the short description for the command and uh, usage, uh, how we want the user to use it and then the log, long description. So for example, now if I do, um, 
I'd rather do it in Visual Studio Terminal or uh, switch between Windows. I'll do it in Visual Studio Terminal. Right. Oh no, I'll switch between terminals so that uh, the screen uh, space is taken up. All right. Huh. So uh, if I do go run main.go. So right now it'll uh, provide me the uh, entire longer description. Uh, so that is what we have defined over here, the longer description. Uh, so if you don't provide anything, it will automatically uh, provide the longer description for the command. And if you want the command to have a functionality associated with it. So this is where we would uh, have the uh, run uh, uh, key. So if you un if I uncomment this, uh, so this is where uh, the run key is where we would uh, define the function for the actual functionality of the root command. So it, since it was com uh, commented out, uh, Cobra automatically prints the long description of the command. So now if I run uh, go, it still uh, prints the long description because there is nothing really uh, happening in this function. So now we can uh, maybe take a look at the uh, arguments that are uh, passed into it. So let's just print the uh, arguments that are being passed into these. So now if I do go run main.go and then provide some arguments, say arg1. So the command should actually print the uh, arguments. We're printing the entire array, hence uh, we have these square brackets, but uh, it's printing the arguments. Since there is actually some functionality associated with this root command, it is executing that and not uh, printing the longer description. And uh, let's say we uh, uh, use a flag that is not already defined. Uh, let's say we use help. No, help is already usually defined by default. So let's look at verbos. Well, we haven't defined a flag called verbos. So if we do that, now it will actually uh, provide us the uh, entire uh, error message and then how to use that is hello with flags. So this usage is what is being used over here. And uh, the help flag comes by default. And if you're wondering how the toggle flag came in, uh, so if we scroll down over here, there is a toggle flag uh, that is defined uh, by the generator. We'll get to that. Uh, we'll get to the flags once we complete with the actual root functionality. So here, uh, what we'll just have, uh, we'll not have any root functionality for this. So I'll actually comment this out uh, once again. So we'll have uh, sub commands that will have the actual functionality, say, uh, for the CLI. This CLI is just to demonstrate, uh, you know, the application. So we'll, we'll have, have a real world uh, use case with the to do CLI. Even that will not be a completely real world application because there will be no interaction with the database. Uh, but yeah, uh, and here in the init function, this is called uh, each time uh, this root CLI is called. So we'll uh, we can define all the flags over here. So there are two kinds of flags. One is the general flag that is associated with that command. So here uh, with the root command, and if you have sub commands, uh, we can have flags associated with just that command. And there are the root commands. So this is associated with all the uh, commands. So this is the global uh, flag, global uh, flags. Sorry, I was talking about uh, persistent flags, and this is associated with all the uh, you know commands. This, so these are global flags. You can use them uh, across the uh, CLI tool with any sub commands and all of that. So for example. Uh, Verbose is a really good example for a persistent flag. So if you have a CLI that has, uh, you know, multiple functionalities associated with, you can have a root flag verbose, and then uh, um, that can specify if you want to print a uh, print an output with a lot of uh, information in it or just a short uh, uh, description. So that verbose flag can be a global flag or a persistent flag, and we'll also, we can also um, uh, refer to this persistent flag in other uh, sub commands. I'll uh, show that. Okay, now I will actually define this uh, persistent flag. And here, uh, okay, we'll actually define this and then we'll get to that. Okay, now we notice that there's an error here. This is a CFG file uh, variable that is that it's expecting. So the, we actually go through the uh, syntax over here. We have the uh, root CMD or it can be any variable name. We have the variable name that we have defined over here, and then dot uh, either persistent flags or flags, and then the type of uh, flag uh, or the variable uh, kind. The, so the data structure. So it can be string, bool, uh, and there's another difference over here. So here, if you notice, it's just a string var, and here it says boolean p. Um, there are different kinds over here. So I'll uh, show that. So there's string var p. So this uh, this means that uh, 
P uh, stands for that you can have a short uh, flag as well. So for example, I earlier showed about uh, dash dash verbose and then dash V, right? So this P indicates whether you can have that option for a dash V. Not all flags have that short hand version because there might be uh, multiple flags have, starting with the same character. So you obviously cannot have uh, multiple flags with the same short hand version, right? So you will have just one flag with that short hand version and the rest uh, with the complete uh, flag. So that is where this uh, P, uh, you know, plays a significant role. And uh, the next uh, is just bool P or bool var P. So if you want a variable associated with it, uh, you can use var. If not, uh, if you're just, uh, you know, having that flag without a variable associated with it, you can just uh, not use that var. But generally, we'll have a variable associated with it. So I'll, I'll define this, say, verbose, since I'm referring to that a lot. Um, and we'll define this variable somewhere outside over here so that uh, it can be referenced throughout this uh, file, not a, in just in that function. So that's the reason I'm uh, defining it outside uh, over here. And we'll need to provide the uh, variable type. So or verbose bool. And now this has to be, once again, a Boolean type. That's why uh, it is complaining. We we'll make this bool war and then bool war p. So now uh, we were going over the syntax and then I got uh, sidelined. OK, uh, so the syntax is uh, bool war p. When we use the p, it expects an extra argument. That is the shorthand version for it. So we'll have this v. And then the next part is the uh, default uh, value for it. It obviously cannot be a string because we're expecting a Boolean. So we'll give this uh, a default value of false. And we'll name this verbose as well. So this is the actual uh, flag name. So if you're using dash dash uh, something, this is where we would define that. And this is the shorthand version for it. And this is the uh, default value. And the next part is the description uh, for it. So we'll just say. Uh, print verbose so this is the uh this is how you would uh, define a flag it can either be either be a persistent flag or a flag it up uh, the syntax doesn't really change only this part uh, decides whether it's a persistent flag or a general flag for that particular command so now i'll actually comment this out we will not be looking at that uh, now if i do go Go run main dot go. I should print the long output because uh, we don't really have a functionality associated. Now, if I do verbos, okay, uh, we really don't have any functionality associated with it. So here's what we're going to do. We I'll, I'll uncomment this, and then I'll actually print the value of the flag over here. So we can use that value uh, flag over here, and then uh, say uh, have conditions whether we want to print the entire output or not. So that's where we would use it. That's the reason I uh, defined it as a global variable. So now if I define a uh, printout verbose over here, it should print out true. And now if I do not uh, provide that value, it should uh, print out false. So this is how flags work. Uh, I hope that was clear. And uh, with respect to why this is a persistent flag, I'll uh, create a sub command and then we'll look into referencing this persistent flag for that sub command. Right. So let's get back to the CLI docs. And here's how we can add uh, commands to the project. So this CLI add provides that functionality as well. So we'll have uh, Cobra CLI add and then uh, the sub command that we want to add. So we're still in the same directory. I'll once again clear this. So Cobra CLI add and then um, let's say just say uh, we're adding a sub command called say. So now uh, if you go back to our IDE under CMD directory, we have a say.go uh, file. So if you look at that file, it is exactly uh, the same as the root.cmd. But the only difference is in the init uh, function, we're actually adding that uh, uh, say command as a sub command to the root CMD. So this is where uh, you know we define the hierarchy of the command. So under root CMD, we have the uh, say CMD. And if we want, we can have multiple uh, subcommands under uh, say CMD. So there's also uh, you know that functionality in this generator. So Cobra CLI add, and then uh, we have the command name, and then the parent for that uh, using dash p flag, and then the uh, name of the parent command. So this name of the command comes from uh, this variable name. 
So if you want to add another uh, child command to this, we'd uh, use say CMD over here using this command. But let's uh, look at this uh, newly created command. So now uh, let's go back to the terminal and go run main.go and then uh, say, say. So this is sub command that we're running. Uh, it says say call. That is because the say uh, command has the run uh, function, function defined uh, with the statement uh, just to print say called. And once again, this can uh, take up arguments as well. So for example, uh, let's say, say hello world. So we are passing hello and world as two arguments to this uh, say sub command. If I run this now, it still says say called because it's not really uh, doing anything with the args. So this args variable is what we're interested in right now. We'll uh, print the args variable, although it will print it as an array form, but uh, the general idea is that you can get args uh, to this args command. So now if I run main.go, it says uh, hello world. So we're printing the arguments that were uh, sent to this uh, say sub command. And now we can also refer to the uh, persistent root flag. That was what I was uh, referring to earlier. So now if I print cmd dot this I think it's ah yeah persistent flags cmd or uh, persistent flags and then dot uh, I think it's something around fetch or sorry a little rusty on this okay. lookup yeah so dot lookup and then we'll provide the uh, actual flag that we're looking up so verbose is the flag that we're looking for and then dot value i believe yes dot value so now it will uh, print the value of the persistent root flag that we uh you know the global flag that we define so if i now run this it will also print okay something happened persistent flag under cmd what I'll use say cmd dot uh, I think it has to be cmd. Okay, let me just uh, quickly look this up. Uh, some syntax issue. Okay, if I go to the um, docs, so here is how we would uh, look up. So root cmd dot persistent flags dot look up and then the name of the uh, flag. So I believe the syntax is right. So we'll actually refer to the root CMD instead of the CMD because we've defined it as a persistent flag for the root CMD and not the CMD, my bad. So uh, root CMD dot persistent flags dot lookup and then we're looking up for the verbose flag and then printing the value of that. Now, if I run the same command, it will print false because uh, the default value for that flag was false. And I'll actually clear this. I'm not sure if the bottom is visible. Uh, so now it prints false because uh, we haven't really provided a value for that uh, flag of uh, the root flag and the default value is uh, false. Now, if I provide it, uh, provide the flag, which means that we're uh, setting it to true, it should print true now. So this is how we can uh, set global flags for the root CMD and they can be used across the application. Uh, so that's where persistent flags uh, uh, play a part. So I think we've covered uh, creating commands, creating flags, uh, what else? I think the, that was uh, the first part of the agenda. Uh, we'll now look into creating the uh, to-do uh, CLI. So just a re kind of a real world uh, application, um, but not really completely, but nobody manages their to-do uh, applications with the CLI, right? So uh, I'll uh, create a new directory over here, to-do CLI. I already have a to-do directory. So that's, a, that's the reason I'm adding a CLI part to the end. To do CLI. Okay, let's uh, start from scratch once again. We'll use the Cobra uh, CLI generator to initialize it. We'll first uh, initialize our Go uh, module, Go module in it. We've created uh, our module. Uh, and if you're wondering what this module is, uh, if you go to go.mod, this is the module that we've defined. This is actually the hello application still, but, but uh, this is uh, similar to the package.json or maybe uh, requirements.txt in Python or uh, 
form.xml in java so that is where this is where we define all the dependencies and uh, if you notice that spf13 cobra was automatically uh, included over here because we use the uh, generator it does it all for us so this is honestly the best way to get started with that with cobra i'll uh, once again initialize a new cli cobra cli in it and then now i'll open this up in visual studio code i'll uh, go through this a little quicker since we have already ex uh, explained the concept of uh, creating uh, commands and then creating flags so here uh, the main purpose of creating this to do cli is to show you where you can add your logic and then how you can uh, you know create somewhat of a real world application so uh, we'll not be doing anything with the root uh, command once again so i'll add a sub command uh, cobra cli add and then uh, say list so this will actually list all the uh, to do that we have uh, or the all the action items that we will have so if you go to list.go this is where we will have the actual logic but we'll also require uh, uh, another file or another package where uh, you know in a real world application where that is where you would have your database logic but here uh, i'll just uh, you know create some functions that will uh, return some raw data uh, so the it's not really complicated with the uh, database logic but uh, there are database drivers like goorm or uh, maybe you can have a session on that uh, using goorm um, and then creating maybe a rest api uh, for all create read all of that but uh, for now uh, i'll just have uh, a simple file that would uh, return some raw data is just a variable uh, or an array of an array or a list of a list depending on what language uh, you use uh, it will just return uh, a list of data and uh, let's have this package name as good. okay and then uh, i'll have a function list tasks okay and then this will not take in anything this will uh, return a list of lists or string Right. So this will actually return um, array of array containing strings. Now we'll return. I'll actually look up the syntax. A uh, little rusty on the syntax. If, uh, if you work with the multiple, if you work with multiple languages, uh, uh, the syntax can get a little rusty. Uh, right. So we will define the data variable, or I think it's best that I copy it from, from the slash. I think we have the same uh, data. Task. So um, I'll just copy the first function over here. I'll uh, explain it obviously. So we're uh, we have the uh, function list task. It returns an array of array containing strings, and then the data variable is an array of array uh, containing strings. And then each uh, item in that array is once again an array which has uh, the values task one, and then the the date for the task so this is a simple uh, function that returns this value but in a real world application you would have a, a call to a database maybe um, uh, maybe esqlite some database uh, where you would uh, store the data but in my case uh, i just have it uh, over here hard coded and we will call that from this uh, file where uh, you know we'll uh, display the functionality of actually having this cli okay so we are in the list uh, list.go file and in the run uh, run key here is where we would uh, define our logic so first thing is we will not we'll remove this we don't want to uh, display that function was called and now we'll uh, actually call that uh, you know list all uh, function so we'll do i think it's uh, to do dot list all a uh, list tasks sorry and uh, another thing to notice about this is uh, that this function name has to uh, needs to be uh, needs to start with a capital letter. If it uh, starts with a small letter, then it will not be exported uh, by this file. So if you want uh, uh, a function to be exported by this package to do, yeah, it has to start with a capital letter. So that's one thing to uh, note about Golang. Uh, so we'll call that function. Uh, we'll uh, assign that to a variable, say data. 
Okay, the error is because we are not using that variable. That's also a thing in Go. Uh, we'll also look at another uh, library that will help us uh, print it in a pretty format. So there's this uh, library called, uh, I don't know, this person's username. I'm sorry, I can't pronounce that. Table writer. Uh, we can install that using go get uh, github.com their username and table writer we'll do that over here so this is just like uh, the equivalent of uh, npm install or uh, any of those similar package manager tools so i believe now it should be installed uh, let's look at go.mod go .mod file and here is the uh, table writer uh, installed and now we can reference that uh, in our application we'll once again refer to the docs of this one so here they once again they have uh, an array of array strings we are interested in uh, creating the table this is oh this library is used to you know uh, print it in a pretty format like this so that's the purpose of using this library so i'll uh, copy that and uh, table writer has to be imported so we'll use visual studio code to do that for us so it has added this uh, import for us and we're not, no longer using the FMT library because I removed the print statement. So I'll remove that. And uh, new writer OS will also require, require the OS package. Uh, I'll add it myself. Okay. And the next thing is well, the table headers. So if you look at this output, each table has a header with associated with it. So I'll add the header as task. And then the next part is date. We don't have we don't really have a third column so i'll remove that and the next part is to add the actual data so we'll we just have a simple for loop and that would uh, go through the data and then add it uh, append it to the table so is that now uh, since the variable name is data over here as well so uh, it is picking that up and then uh, going through each uh, record in that uh, data variable and then adding it to the table and then finally we're entering the table so now this is the logic of uh, our application. So we have another file where we're getting the data from, and then here uh, we are uh, appending it uh, or uh, printing it in a table format. So now uh, let me clear this. Now if I run go run main dot go, and then um, you know what was it called? Uh, list. It should print that table for me. Yes. So we are actually getting printing that data in a pretty format. So uh, the next thing that we'll look at is We'll add a simple flag to this. Uh, or uh, we look at the time. Okay, we, we'll add the time flag for this. And flags dot um, we'll have a boolean flag once again. So bool uh, war p will associate it with a variable, and we'll also have a shorthand uh, for it, and we'll call this all flag. And then oh, the first thing is uh, the variable name um, and pointed to the variable. So and all, and then the actual uh, flag name, and then the short uh, form for the flag that is, we'll have it as A. And then the default value is false. And uh, the description print all tasks. So the idea behind this is that you know you would have tasks that were already completed and then. Uh, tasks that are yet to be done so when you use it by default uh it will just print the tasks that are yet to be done and when you print it uh, with all flag it will print uh, the tasks that were all completed as well so that's the idea behind having this flag print all tasks and uh, once again i'll uh, define this as a global variable so i can reference uh, it inside this uh, function as well or uh, you can also uh, reference since this is uh, bound with uh, the list.cmd we can also uh, you know reference that using the lookup function, but uh, I'll use it as a uh, global variable. It's like how we uh, reference that uh, global flag using the root CMD in our hello uh, CLI. It's the same thing can be done over here, uh, but I'll use the uh, global variable and then reference it over here. Okay, the next thing is we'll uh, require the data. So I'll just scroll up and then copy the data once again. So when, uh, there is another function that would uh, print all tasks. So this time it is printing uh, three, uh, you know, three items in an array. Um, so it has uh, the status whether it is done or not. And some quick logic over here. Uh, so we'll check if uh, all is set. If it is set, then uh, we'll get the data 
from a different function to do dot uh, list all tasks and then just quickly try to run through this uh we'll have this uh somewhere at the top over here because that's common to both uh, whether we have the flag or not we'll require a table and the table header will depend on the uh, flag that is uh, if you have the flag we'll just have two headers if we don't have the flag uh, we'll have three headers sorry if you have the flag we'll have three headers and if you don't uh, just two headers uh and then the data will also depend on whether the flag is set or not uh we'll actually define this as a variable outside over here so that it can be referenced both inside the uh inside both the blocks if and else okay and now since we've already declared it uh, we'll not require this colon we're just assigning it a value so i believe now this should be all right so we have uh, we're checking whether that all flag is set if it is set we're calling the list all tasks function and then we're uh, defining the header with a new uh, column if not uh, we're just uh, calling the list task and then uh, having a header with just two uh, uh, two columns and then we have the loop that will go through the data uh, variable and then print print it in a table so now i'll save this once again so if i just run it without the flag it will uh, print the same output of course now if i run it with the flag it will print up uh, you know the newer output that is with the status so this is how we can have uh, you know uh, flags and then sub commands in uh, using uh, cobra cli now to the part where we uh, package this and then uh, package this for uh, multiple environments there are two things that we need to keep in mind while packaging applications that is first the uh, operating system that we want to package and then the architecture of the uh, machine that we want to package to so um, in while uh, building the uh, uh, binary so we we'll, we can set it uh, using two variables that is go os go os is where we would uh, set the operating system uh, if you are uh, building it for mac it is darwin for linux we will say linux and then for windows it's windows so i'll build it for windows is it windows or windows i'm not sure okay uh, i don't i'm not sure if the s is present we will find out uh, and then uh, this is just setting the environment variable for this particular command so you can either have it as a global environment variable or uh, anywhere in your path all of that uh, you know, doesn't really matter and the next part is go arc uh, so the architecture that we want to build with windows i think uh, it's either 64 bit or 32 bit there are actually uh, some aliases for that so uh, 64 bit is i believe it is called 64 bit for 32 bit uh, i think it's x32 or something of that sort uh, but i'll just uh, build it for windows since uh, this linux machine that i'm in and the windows host machine that i'm going to run it are uh, using the same architecture so i should be good over here but if you want to change the architecture you'd use uh, go arc uh, you know environment variable so now go build uh this will build the uh, cli for us so now if i look at these files there is to do cli.exe so this is a windows executable file that is created if i run it uh, just with go build um it should now just give me the to do cli this, so this is the linux executable so uh I forgot to mention so i'm using wsl so this the entire thing that i'm running is in a linux environment that is isolated from the windows environment but i can still access it through the windows environment but uh, it is a complete uh, linux uh, machine so if i run it without any flags it will build me a linux uh, uh, binary if i run it with that uh, you know environment variable go os uh, windows it will uh, give me a linux uh, binary or linux executable so if i now run it uh, with the linux binary that we just created uh, to do cli list this should work and all as well i'll quickly uh, try running this in uh, windows as well just to show you that that um, you know that executable that we created works so i'll copy this this is the cli application or the exe file i'll paste it in my downloads and then i'll open up powershell so it is in my downloads uh now i'll navigate to downloads and then dot slash to do cli exe that, that i just uh, 
copy and paste paste it here list ship up now might be a little slow for the first run uh, but uh, yeah we'll come back to it uh, okay it did work so it works right so i i was able to uh, build the uh, windows executable in a linux based environment similarly you can build it for other uh, environments as well uh, provide the architecture using go arc and then provide the uh, os using go os so that's how you would package this uh, to multiple uh, you know platforms but ideally we would not do it uh, manually using you know providing the go os and go arc for each uh, each and every uh, architecture each and every operating system so that's where uh, go releaser comes in so this is what uh, this is the tool that we will be using to uh, package our application and then uh, deploy and um, create binaries for multiple uh, multiple platforms and also uh, publish it on github uh, github releases so uh, this is another open source project uh, go releaser this is what we'll be using for that and we can either uh, you know use go releaser on our machine or on cid cicd systems so we'll be using it on the cicd system github actions so that's where we will uh, upload uh, all our binaries to github as a github release so uh, first thing is we'll require uh, first thing is we'll require to uh, you know download the go releaser cli you can do it without the go releaser cli as well but uh, the go releaser cli will uh, once again bootstrap some uh, configuration for us sorry um sorry about that uh, so we will use the go releaser cli to bootstrap the configuration for us i already have go releaser uh, cli installed uh, believe it somewhere get started it is very similar to installing the uh, cobra cli so if you go to install yeah you can either install it using brew if you have brew installed on your machine or uh, there are different ways of installing it you can also install it using go so i installed it using go go install github.com go releaser slash go releaser so that's how you would install go releaser cli you uh, like i mentioned you can do it without the go releaser cli as well but it will uh, bootstrap some code for us some uh, configuration for us so if i go to quick start i'll zoom this in okay so this is where it mentions that we'll have an application so we already have our uh, cli application ready uh, go releaser init is the command that we're looking for go releaser init okay Go releaser is not uh, found. Um, okay, it's not present for some reason. I'll live demo. Let's install it. Uh, okay, I get the reason. Uh, I think I'm in a different Go version. Yep. Mm, I need to switch to uh, Go 18. So I recently installed it. Uh, so it Go releaser. Uh, uses uh, 1.18 1 uh, so they're very uh, quick in uh, updating their go version so it does it is no longer supported in 1.17 so i'll need to switch my version uh, i think it's 1.18 yeah okay so it's not uh, it's not working so the reason why this happened was uh, go releaser is now only uh, supported in 1.18 in 1.17 it does not work so i had to switch to 1.18 the uh, newest uh, go version it was actually released a week ago or two weeks ago uh, go releaser is pretty quick in updating uh, their package so now it has created a dot go releaser dot yaml file hub let's look at that in our uh, ide here it is dot go releaser dot yaml and this is an example file that they've generated so the first thing it specifies is uh, before hooks so this is where uh, we would specify anything that we want to run before we actually package the application so you might want to uh, you know mod, use go mod tidy to um, clean all the uh, dependencies or use go generate and then have uh, any uh, custom commands that we have but in our case we have uh, none of it so go releaser is not just for uh, cobra it is for all uh, go applications right so each application might have some uh, command that you might uh, want to run before you package your application maybe download some uh, artifacts uh, all of that can be done using done using uh, the before hooks but in our case we have uh, absolutely nothing 
it's just uh, go run uh, main dot go and our application will run that's the simplicity of uh, using the cobra cli and the builds so this is where we specify the build uh, how we want to build the cli uh, and we can specify some environment variables for the build C go is uh, enabled, uh, is actually disabled. So by setting it to zero, we'll not worry about what C go is. We'll just leave it as it is. And here is where we would specify the operating systems that we want to package it for. So using once again, go OS, we want Linux, Windows, Darwin. We can also specify the uh, go arc as well. Um, we'll. Look at the documentation for that. So that's the best place to look at it. We'll look at builds. There's actually a lot more, uh, uh, you know, you can specify uh, the ID the directory where uh, uh, the go, go code is containing. So for example, in your repository, you might not actually have it in the root of the repository. Your go code might be uh, somewhere in some directory. So for that, uh, you'll use this DIR and then where the main file is for all of that, uh, you know, you can use this and then the binary name that we want and any flag that we want to specify during the build. Uh, there's a lot more uh, options. Uh, there's go arc so different uh, architectures that we want to build amd64 uh, arm arm64 so we'll actually build for all of these or, uh, and then i've pasted it uh, so now it is building it for linux windows darwin for all of these architectures and the archives is where uh, we would uh, specify what we want to include uh, from our source code along with uh, uh, you know the binary so if you uh, download a cli uh, from GitHub, it always comes with some kind of documentation associated with it. Maybe some readme dot uh, readme dot md file. All of that will come uh, with uh, you know the binary. So this is where we will specify that. If we once again go back to the archives um, path, so sorry, the archives uh, section under Go releaser. Here we can uh, specify what we want to include. That is under files. Let's say we want to include uh, the readme.md. We actually don't have the readme.md in our, um, no, under this. Okay, this is written in YAML, so the uh, indentation is very important. So if we want to include uh, maybe license, let's just include license for the sake of it. So this will be included in our, uh, in our uh, binary CLI. And uh, replacements is where we would specify uh, what to rename uh, once the binary is created. So for example, we want uh, Linux uh, Darwin to be renamed with the capital D Linux with the capital L Windows and all of the 386 to be uh, written as I386, AMD64 as x86, for this is basically renaming uh, the binary uh, in the archive. And the checksum uh, is where we define what uh, the configuration for the checksum that is uh, if you download a cli you can verify if that uh, cli was uh, that you've downloaded is genuine using the checksum uh, and the uh, go releaser will also create a checksum for our uh, binary so and we would spe specify the name of the checksum file using checksums.txt and snapshot is uh, where we would uh, go releaser has a feature where you can you know just build your application and not upload it anywhere or not do anything with it not validate it for all of that, you can use a snapshot. There is go releaser attached a snapshot flag. And uh, for the binary that is generated with that snapshot, we are uh, specifying the name for that. Uh, so this is not really important. So we're not creating snapshots. So I'll actually remove this. Change log. So this is where uh, uh, once we create a GitHub release using go releaser, it will uh, create a change log for a change log for us. So from our previous release to this release, whatever commits are uh, done on our GitHub repository, it will um, you know, take all of those commits and then uh, add it as points for our uh, change log. So it will uh, show us what was done uh, between the previous release and uh, our current release. And if we follow conventional, uh, you know, git commits, we can exclude uh, certain commits uh, from our release. So for example, if you want anything that is start, uh, if you want to exclude anything that is starting with docs, test or build, uh, we can specify that over here. So it will exclude any commit that starts with docs, text, or build. And uh, I think that's about uh, this goreleaser.yaml file. Next, we'll uh, need to define the GitHub action. So here, uh, somewhere if we go around, there's continuous integration. Under continuous integration, uh, GitHub actions, there's a lot more uh, uh, you know, integrations available. We'll look at uh, the GitHub actions since we're packaging it and uh, uh, creating a GitHub release. 
I'll copy this entire thing and uh, walk you through what exactly is being done over here. If you're not familiar with uh, GitHub Actions, and all GitHub Actions need to be specified uh, in a directory called dot GitHub in the root of the repository and slash uh, workflows. This is where all the workflows are defined. You can have other things uh, in dot GitHub, maybe uh, an issue template, pull request template. All of that goes under dot GitHub uh, directory. And under workflows, we'll have the actual file that contains the uh, GitHub uh, work workflow. So we're naming it, uh, you can name it anything. Uh, go user.yaml is what we're naming it. And I've pasted that. Uh, will not require uh, the permissions to create the content that is not necessary. And the name of the workflow is defined using the name uh, key. And on defines when uh, we want to uh, trigger this uh, build or trigger this uh, workflow. Uh, let's not trigger it on pull request and on push. We want to trigger it only when tags are, uh, you know, pushed to our uh, repository. So let's define it as a star tag, a uh, wildcard. So this means any tag that is pushed to the repository will uh, trigger this build. So this is uh, the meaning of this entire section and the jobs is where we define multiple jobs. So if you are familiar with the CACD pipeline, you'll have multiple jobs running one after another or in parallel. So we have just one job over here, the go releaser job. This will uh, obviously build the uh, binary using go releaser. This name can be once again, anything. Uh, we'll just keep it to a go releaser. It runs on open to latest. So the actual uh, operating system where uh, the entire uh, workflow runs is on open to latest uh, operating system. And each job has multiple steps associated with it. So it says uh, do this step one, step two, and then uh, so on and so forth. So the first step is to check out the uh, source code using the uh, actions checkout uh, that is available uh, through GitHub. And the next step is we'll, uh, we are fetching all flags, all tags, sorry, since we are uh, only uh, push, uh, only creating a release based on tags, we'll need to fetch all the tags so that we have the information about the tags while creating our GitHub release. The next thing is we're uh, setting up Go. We'll obviously need, require Go to uh, build our application. So we're uh, setting up Go. The next step is that. And the final step is to actually run the Go releaser. So this is the uh, action that Go releaser team has created and is available on the GitHub marketplace. So this is a pre-built action that we're using with a few environment variables that we are uh, providing. We'll leave all of these to uh, default. So the Go releaser has actually two versions. That is a community version Go releaser or the Go releaser pro. We'll use the community version uh, because we're not paying for it. And uh, the disk distribution um, go releaser like we like i said we're using the community community version and the version that we want is the latest one and some uh, arguments that we want to provide to the uh, go releaser so it's just uh, specifying remove the uh, disk that is uh, disk is where uh, the actual binaries are created so once we are done with the job uh, it is just specifying to remove those uh, uh, that disk directory so this this can be omitted but uh, let's just have it and the environment variables that we're providing is, uh, sorry, these were the arguments. I mentioned that these were environment variables earlier. No, these are the arguments that we're uh, providing to the action. The uh, environment variables are specified under the ENV uh, key. We're specifying the GitHub token. This is necessary uh, so that uh, Go Releaser can go ahead and create a GitHub release for us uh, in our name. All right, uh, let's just save this. Uh, just can Sorry, just give me a second. Uh right, uh, sorry, sorry about that. So now uh, we have git status. Okay, we haven't initialized the uh, repository. Let's just initialize at least git init. Now we have an empty repository that is initialized. If I do git status, okay, let's, I'll actually remove the uh, to do CLI binary since we do not want to check that in. Yeah, I've removed that. And now I'll uh, do our first commit. Uh, could actually include everything. So hit add and then commit it. Maybe with a commit fetch initial commit. So now I've uh, committed it. Uh, I've created a commit. Now the next step is to uh, add it to a remote repository. I have a empty repository that I've just created. I'll uh, copy this from GitHub. So all it is doing is uh, I'm adding this repository as a remote for that Git repository. 
create uh, switching the branch uh, to main and then pushing the main branch so i'll just paste that in so now um, our code is pushed in but uh, i'll refresh this so our uh, code is checked into the github repository if i go under actions it's obviously not triggered because we do not have a tag uh, created now i'll uh, tag our application git tag a and then uh, provide the actual tag uh, let's just name it v0.1 and then dash m and then the actual uh, message that we want associated with the tag so this will be the release name so i'll just name it uh, release first release so we've tag created the tag next thing is we'll push the tag using the quit push follow tags command so now we've uh, created a new tag and that is pushed now the action should have been triggered yes the action is triggered is triggered now now go releaser will do the magic for us and then uh, create binaries for all the application and then uh, create it as a github release let's just go back to the code tab uh, quickly if you notice that it's already created a release is it no it has not created a release yet but there is one tag associated with this repository uh, so if i go to that there is obviously no releases yet because the action is still running let's just wait for this action to run and then we'll have a release uh, over there automatically so that's the uh, beauty of using go releaser i think uh, let's just give it a few minutes for it to run um, might have gone a little too quick but uh just wanted to cover everything uh, okay all right in the meanwhile uh, it runs are there any questions uh, i'm happy to answer Yeah, I don't think there are any questions, but uh, you did not go fast. You were uh, really detailed in terms of teaching and I love your sessions, to be honest. Thanks. And this is super fun. I think we should do, I know I keep asking you for a lot of these things, but I think we should do sure, GitHub Actions specific one sometime. Sure, it's actually, yeah, it's actually very interesting. Uh, when, uh, yeah. There's a lot of things that can be done with GitHub Actions, not just, you know, a regular CACD pipeline. There's a lot yeah. of things that can be done. So our uh, you know action was successful. Now let's go back to the code tab. Here we have uh, a new release. Earlier it was just the tag name. Now we have a new release and the change log. So it has picked up the commit that we created. If we had any other commits, it would have picked up all of them and then ha had it as a list over here. And under assets, here's the interesting part. We have uh, you know the CLI uh, for all of these uh, different environments, different architectures. And we also have the source code uh, in case somebody wants to build it on their own. Uh, so if you might have noticed this in a lot of GitHub repositories, right? Uh, when you're trying to download something. So this is how uh, you, know, you can create it with Go Releaser if it is a Go uh, based application. Yep, uh, that covers uh, uh, everything that I wanted to cover about uh, creating CLI tools with Golang. So if there are any questions, uh, even not, if not right now, uh, please feel free to reach out uh, later. Yes, if you want to reach out to Avnash, please check out his profile links in the description below. Thank you so much, Avnash, for this insightful session and also a really fun walkthrough without many fails. Uh, also, the action worked pretty well. Yeah. Great. Uh, thanks, Avnash. Keep coming and doing more of these uh, sessions with us. Sure.